Good morning and welcome to Walking with Jesus Through the Word, one chapter per day. I am Pastor Jason Van Bemmel from Forest Hill Presbyterian Church. It is our 690th day in God's Word, coming up on 700 pretty soon. And we're on our way to 1095, I think is the final goal in our three-year journey through the Word of God. We're here in Isaiah, Isaiah 15, back in Isaiah after a little detour back into Luke. Yesterday, let's pray and ask the Lord's help. Father, thank you for your word. Thank you for the privilege it is to be in your word day by day. Thank you for the truth that your word contains. Thank you for the glory it reveals to us of your character, of your will for our lives. Help us to hear your word, receive your word, walk in your word by faith, that we might trust Jesus and walk with him more closely, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Isaiah chapter 15, an oracle concerning Moab. Because Ar of Moab is laid waste in a night, Moab is undone. Because Kir of Moab is laid waste in a night, Moab is undone. He has gone up to the temple and to Dibon, to the high places to weep over Nebo and over Mediba. Moab wails. On every head is baldness, every beard is shorn. In the streets they wear sackcloth, on the housetops and in the squares everyone wails and melts in tears. Heshbon and Eliela cry out, their voice is heard as far as Jahaz, therefore the armed men of Moab cry aloud, his soul trembles. My heart cries out for Moab, her fugitives sleep flee to Zoar, to Eglath Shalashia, for at the ascent of Luhith they go up weeping, on the road to Horonaim they raise a cry of destruction. The waters of Nimrim are a desolation. The grass is withered. The vegetation, the vegetation fails. The greenery is no more. Therefore, the abundance they have gained and what they have laid up, they carry away over the brook of the willows. For a cry has gone around the land of Moab. Her wailing reaches to Eglam. Her wailing reaches to Beer Elim. For the waters of Dibon are full of blood. For I will bring upon Dibon even more, a lion for those of Moab who escape, for the remnant of the land. Hmm. That is Isaiah chapter 15, um, an oracle concerning Moab. So Moab, the Moabites, they are a people who are to the east of Judah. They are on the other side of the Red Sea. The Moabites, we know Ruth was a Moabitess. She came from the Moabites. But we also know that the Moabites were banished from being allowed in the assembly of Israel uh, because of the hostility that they showed to Israel when Israel was going through the wilderness and during the Exodus and making their way toward the Promised Land. And so Moab has been under a curse by God. And here Moab has been destroyed by the Assyrian Empire. Again, it's big bad Assyria who is the threatening power in the world at this time. And they've kind of made a circuit around Judah. And so they've they've picked off some of the edges of Judah. Um, and then they've gone up the east side of the Dead Sea, the east side of the Jordan River, the Dead Sea at the bottom of the Jordan River. And they've picked off Moab. Ar of Moab, Kir of Moab. These are major cities. And they are they're destroyed very, very quickly, very swiftly by the Assyrians. And so, what are they doing? Well, they're going up to their false gods, aren't they? That's what people do. They, When people are in distress, they cry out to whatever they think is God. And so there is mourning, there is repentance, but there is a seeking of false gods. And that doesn't help them at all. Whenever we are in distress, we will always turn to and cry out to whatever is truly our God. And that's a way for us to sort of be exposed, to have our hearts be exposed, do a heart check, right? Heart check. When you're in distress, when you're in anguish, where do you turn? Do you turn to the Lord? Or do you turn to food? Or do you turn to alcohol? Or do you turn to anger? Or do you turn to the government and demand a solution? Where do you turn? Because where you turn in your deepest distress 
is who your God is. And so they've gone up to the temple and to Dibon, to the high places to weep over Nepo and over Mediba, Moab, Wales. On every head is baldness, every beard is shorn. There is this desperate cry to the gods they think are going to save them. But those gods cannot save them. They are false gods. Now, the Lord says in verse 5, My heart cries out for Moab. Her fugitives flee to Zoar. Now, they're fleeing in a direction that would bring them perhaps into some help from Judah to Eglath Shelishia. For at the ascent of Luhith, they go up weeping. On the road to Horonam, they rise, they raise a cry of destruction. The waters of Nimrim are a desolation. The grass is withered, the vegetation fails, the greenery is no more. Therefore, the abundance they have gained and they have laid up, they carry away over the brook of the willows. They are they are in distress. They're fleeing before the Assyrians. And they're, they are heading kind of in the direction of, of Judah. And God is mourning for them. Even though they were idolaters, even though they were hostile to God's people, even though they deserve the condemnation that's coming upon them, even though they're not seeking the Lord, but they're crying out to their idols, God still has compassion on them. And he's going to instruct his people to, to be compassionate to them and to welcome the refugees and to offer them help. But that's coming. But so we need to see that um, just as we need to check our own hearts and realize what are our idols, you know, what are we turning to when we're in distress? When we see someone else who's in distress, maybe our culture, our neighbors, those around us, we see them in distress and we see them turning to idols, to false gods, you know, to their security, to their finances, to the government, to um, alcohol or drugs or to whatever. We need to realize that that's sad and we need to pray for them and we need to pity them and we need to have compassion on them. Our heart should break that anybody should put their trust in false gods during a time of distress. And so we should care about them. And yet, just because God has compassion on them, doesn't mean that what they're doing in trying to seek relief is actually going to work for them. In fact, there's going to be uh, a lion for those of Moab who escape for the remnant of the land. God is, the Assyrians come through and they come through and they destroy so much cities and populations. And then the people who go wandering off in the wilderness looking for a place to go, guess what? Lions are going to come after them. And that lion sent by God. Why? Because God is judging them. God is judging them for their idolatry and for their faithlessness and for their hostility to God's people. Even though God is moved with compassion, he is also judging because God is love and God is just and holy and his justice and his holiness calls for wrath against sin. And these are, these are attributes of God that are both true and they're both active all the time. So God doesn't afflict from the heart, as Lamentations 3 says. God doesn't willingly or delight in, you know, God takes no pleasure in the death of the wicked, his word says. So God's not, not delighting in the judgment that he sends, but he sends the judgment because it is what is required by his holiness and his justice. And it is also the best way to potentially get people to wake up and repent. So uh, we live in a world that is created by God, sustained by God, blessed by God, but a world in which people do not seek the one true God. So God brings calamity and hardship. When calamity and hardship comes, people still don't seek the one true God. They still turn aside to their idols. And so God brings even more calamity and hardship on them because they're still not turning to him, right? And so they need to. That's that's what they need. And so we as God's people need to be that voice that says to the world boldly and yet with compassion, right? With 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 faithfulness to God's word, but with compassion toward fallen and enslaved sinners. Your gods have failed you. They cannot save you. There is only one true God. Seek him and you will be saved. 
That's what we need to speak into a world where there is calamity, warfare, destruction, economic collapse, hopelessness, suicide, drug overdose. We need to be able to speak the truth and say, your gods that you have sought, gods of self-esteem, gods of, of consumerism, gods of political um, obsession, gods of entertainment and distraction. They haven't helped you. They haven't saved you. They can't help you. They can't save you. Only God can, and God will if you seek him through his son, Jesus Christ. Let's pray. Father, thank you for that you've given us the truth. We didn't deserve it. We weren't even really looking for it from you, but you gave it to us in your son, Jesus, and by your Holy Spirit, drawing us to faith in Jesus. We thank you for that. We ask that you would draw our hearts ever more and more to Christ and away from ourselves and our selfish foolishness. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, that's Isaiah 15. Thanks for joining me for the 690th day together in God's Word. I do hope you have a blessed day in the Lord tomorrow, Isaiah 16.